Hey guys, Tomboy601, and today, well, it's by our day, baby. I think this is one of the most anticipated premiums ever to come over to World of Warships Legends, and I think rightfully so, because this ship is a ton of fun, but we will get into it, because I definitely don't recommend it for everyone. So, with all that said, if you haven't been around for one of our views, what can you expect? Well, we're gonna go over the commander, we're gonna go over the modules, we're gonna go over all of the stats, and then we're gonna go off and show a game in it. So, if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you stay tuned. So, first things first, let's go ahead and talk commander. And uh, guys, I'll be honest, this ship is so versatile that you can set it up however you please, really. I've gone with Andre Lemonnier, with Mimbelli and Mikawa, um, and then we are running uh, Beyond Range, Igniter, Velocious, Steer Clear, and Fully Packed. Um, not that Fully Packed is going to get you an extra heal, because there are no heals on the ship. We'll get to that in, in, a, in a little bit. As far as modules go, well, we are running... Aiming system mod one, uh, propulsion mod, steering gears, and then finally the main battery mod three. Then let's go ahead and take a look at those consumables. As we mentioned already, there are no heals on by yard. Uh, we do have the damage control party, bog standard, five second uh, duration, 58.8 second reload. Then you have the choice between sonar and defensive AA. You you always always go sonar. I don't I don't see why you would ever want defensive AA. Uh, torpedo. Uh, it's going to detect torpedoes three point one. Ships at four point four. It's your kind of French sonar. Ninety six second duration. One hundred seventy six point four second reload, and you're going to get three charges of it next. The engine boost, and it's that special French engine boost, baby. It adds an additional twenty percent to your speed duration of it is 180 seconds going to reload in 117.6 seconds and you're going to get three charges of it finally main battery reload what makes this 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 ship sing uh it's going to reduce the main battery time to reload by half it's going to last for 20 seconds it's going to reload in 140 seconds seconds and with fully packed you get three charges of it baby and oh boy to use it. Also, just a note, we are running the speed flag just because uh, speed is life, speed is key. Uh, she don't got no armor, so don't get shot in her. So uh, speed speed helps you stay out of some sticky situations, so we are running a speed flag on her at all times. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and dive on in to the stats. So by our 34,700 hit points, with an armored thickness between 6 and 120 meters, let me go ahead and throw up that armor scheme. And boy, um, you know, I think in previous videos we talked about how she kind of feel, feels like a spiritual predecessor to uh, Colbert. And of course, uh, just so you know, Bayard wasn't really a ship that was built. So, uh, you know, they can do whatever they please. 25 millimeter armor plating pretty much wraps her. She does have a tiny little, her torpedo belt is 120 mil millimeters. Good luck uh, getting things to bounce off of that. And then let's go ahead and take a look at that Citadel. It is a step Citadel and uh, it is nice and square and sticks proud out of the water. So uh, Bayard, Bayard can get touched. It can absolutely get touched and hurt by pretty much anything with some decent caliber guns out there, especially if you aren't maneuvering correctly. So that's the armor view. Torpedo reduction on the vessel, you're looking at 16%. Main batteries, four three-barreled 152s. I know what you're saying, Tommy, they're only 152s. What's the deal? How is this thing any good? Well, let me tell you, the French uh, sent a spy over to the Germans they are able to steal a couple of their techniques for improved HE pen, not quite the quarter pen, but we do get uh, one fifth uh, HE pen, meaning you can pen 30 millimeters of armor in this baby and get full damage when firing HE. Firing range of those shells, 17.4 kilometers with a reload time of 6.2 seconds, giving you a shell spring of 116. 
180 time on those guns, 17.2 seconds. HE damage is going to be 2,200, giving you a DPM of 255,200. Uh, chance of fire, 15%. AP damage is going to be 3,300, and it is still decent AP, right? Uh, what these guns are essentially are, are four La Gossonier turrets, and uh, they can definitely do some damage. DPM of them, 382,800. Bayard does have secondaries for two-barreled 100 millimeter ones with a range of 5.2 kilometers, a reload time of three seconds, and they'll do 1,400 damage if they hit, and they have an 8% chance to set fire. Torpedoes, two three-barreled 550 millimeter torps. I know it's a bit weird. We're used to 533s, but those Frenchies are gonna be weird. Reload time on them, 90 seconds with a damage of 14,833. Uh, detectability range on them, 1.3 kilometers. Torp speed is 60 knots, though I swear they felt really slow, and I don't know why, because they seem it they seem to be about average torp speed as far as cruisers go, but they they just felt slow. Not, uh, torp range is going to be nine kilometers. AA, okay, it's it's okay. Uh, five five kilometer range minimum is going to be 59 damage. Maximum is going to be 212. One thing to note though is it does get to that maximum damage really quickly. I think the outer ring is like five kilometers and the inner ring is like 4.9 or like 4.8. It is incredibly quick to get up to its maximum AA damage. So you will sustain a very good AA damage for a long time with this ship, which is a nice bonus. Max speed of the vessel, 36.4 knots. And uh, when you hit that uh, speed boost, you're well over 40. And if you build for speed, you can be approaching 50 knots in this baby. Turning radius of the ship, 730 meters, with a rudder shift time of 5.2 seconds. Detectability by seat, 12 kilometers. Detectability by air, 7.5 kilometers. And detectability when firing in smoke, 6.7 kilometers. And those, those are the stats of good old Bayard. Uh, so with all that said, let's go ahead and dive on in to a game with her. So welcome to Trap, and uh, welcome to our game in Bayard. Now, I will say, I don't think this is my highest damage game of the day, but I think there's parts of it that represent exactly what Bayard can do and the sort of damage it can output and what you can expect a Bayard match to kind of feel like. So uh, not like the most impressive game, but I think a good representation of what a good Bayard match ends up looking like. Uh, my initial thoughts on her... Guys, she is, uh, she's fickle. She has high skill ceiling. Uh, and she is a ton of fun to play to those who have mastered this game. Uh, there isn't much room for error and your reward for it is wonderful damage and being constantly stimulated uh, by the ship. I feel like this is, this ship is the exact opposite of Plymouth. Uh, Plymouth, you kind of, get there you pop smoke and that's kind of all you got to do to get your damage this you are you are looking at the map you are trying to detect threat angles you are like okay how how can i read this situation uh, you are you are galaxy braining this game uh if you are playing bayard correctly right you are you are because you are always just one good sh uh, salvo away from being at the end of the match so uh bayard a ton of fun to play but just make sure you've mastered the fundamentals if you think about picking up by art. Anyways, you saw there, uh, we had we had a Turbitz and a Boise, uh, or was that Atlanta? Anyways, uh, two two ships right on out there. We got some good hits on the Turbitz, got a nice fire going, and we can see we're already being spotted, which tells us there is a destroyer about. Um, while these guys are pushing in, we're going to try to catch this destroyer napping, and that's exactly... What we've done here, he's like smoke trying to uh, stall this. We're gonna go ahead and try to uh, see what we can do, not wipe him off the map because uh, I don't know if you've seen this, uh, Bayard does some very good damage to destroyers. Uh, we go ahead, pop our first reload booster, just to, try to, just to try to make sure Akatsuki gets taken off the map as quickly as possible. Turpits coming in a little too close, we're trying to use Akatsuki smoke to our benefit here. We get uh, we get behind the smoke. We go ahead, try to use the last bit of 
that uh, of our reload booster to knock him out. And we're like, okay, at this point, we are too close to this turpits, right? It is, it is well within his ability to hit us. It is time for us to start putting range between us and him. You can see we've done some decent damage to him already. Um, but now... Mr. Atlanta looks like he's uh, trying to get a get a peek. He's using the same uh, advantage of the smoke trick that we were earlier. We just want to get some range. And shout out to this Atlanta player because he lasts way longer than you'd expect for a uh, Atlanta to last at um, in this sort of situation. So good on him. Uh, you can see he pops up right there. He's angled out. We're like, okay, can we get another line of sight on him? Maybe we can get into A. They haven't been able to really push into A, but it's something we need to consider. Some other things we need to consider is, well, our teammates positioning. Because I don't, if, if you see it, you may notice there are approximately four ships in one grid square. And uh, well, that <laughs> that never really helps. Uh, if, if you find yourself uh, with four ships in the same grid square, you need to move out. Um, because it becomes way too easy for people to be able to angle and do such. So, uh, we're recognizing, you know what, A, no matter what kind of happens on this side, uh, we can fi provide some fire support, but, uh, really, we should try to move off into a different area of this map and try to support the rest of our team. So that's exactly... It's exactly the plan here. A uh, primary example of this is uh, this Flanders is kind of a little bit out of position. All of our teammates are currently hunting down that Atlanta and that Turpets, or at least the ones that are on our flank. So we're going to go ahead, use our eyes, use our knowledge of the minimap, and look over to this Flanders. And we are just going to set him on fire so much. We're going to use our second reload booster. You can see we get two permanent fires right here. Uh, he, he must have been had to damage control party earlier because uh, we have those two firm fires he hasn't put anything out and uh, you can see we're starting to aim for the bow of his ship because if we can get a fire up there three perma fires right there uh you know flander flanders not looking too good you can see just the fire <laughs> the fire setting prowess of the ship and what uh Bayard can do when it's not when it's being left kind of unmatched um you know uh, Bayard, she's an excellent excellent anti-battleship ship just because of her ability one to pen 30 millimeters of armor with her he and more importantly uh just to be able to uh set those fires of course 15 percent fire chance in our current build uh and when you're do when you're using like a reload booster or whatever else that is a very impressive amount of uh fire when you have 12 shells raining down on someone at any one point um, and the thing with this 30 millimeters of, of pen, Bayard's shells are just effective against pretty much every single ship out there. Uh, you know, I, I was coming up against a lot of cruisers today. Uh, she was happily chewing through cruisers. She'll happily chew through destroyers. It is, it is anyone's game when it comes to Bayard. Uh, the only thing that really limits you is your hit points because guess what guys you can't heal any of them back uh you you get hit you you are not recovering those hit points so it really is every single engagement is a cost benefit analysis in bayad uh if if you know what you're getting into if if you understand what what's about to go on this can either be a fantastic ship or one that can ultimately uh send you to the david jones locker a little too early anyways uh, we can see our team is all clustered down over in the corner. Um, our Benson just went down. He did take Flanders down with him. Um, and we can see there's a destroyer kind of recently located at C. Now, if I'm that destroyer player, I'm trying to move into B, spot the team for my teammates. Uh, the quickest way between two points is a straight line. So we are going to take our best guess and say this destroyer is probably going to come around through B at some point. Also, we do have this Belfast who has smoked up here. So we've gone ahead, popped our smoke, um, but we've also intercepted this Somers at the same time. We're going to go ahead, pop our uh, pop our last reload booster, mainly because we know torpedoes are on the way. If we, we want to sink him before, if he does 
end up sending us down with those torpedoes. We knock him out. We are going to flip over to AP because Bayard is the enemy Bayard is now broadside to us. We're going to go ahead, uh, sink these into him. There we go. He goes down just, I think, missing the double strike there. And well, now we can go ahead and take this uh, capture point. And we're going to be a bit slow here um, as we just try to like decide what we want to do. Because part of me is like, do we go over and try to finish off this Atlanta? Do we try to push this? Uh, do we try to push um, the Belfast? You know, we're two kills away from the Kraken. Can't, is there a way we can we can finish both of these ships and get ourselves the Kraken? Because this is feeling this is feeling like a good match. At this point, I was like, okay, we've done some fun things. We've showed off a lot of what by heart can do. So uh, maybe maybe this is the one. We have a decent angle on the Atlanta here. He's not. Uh, so maybe maybe we can maintain this angle and we'll get this capture point and see what happens. So while we try to engage Atlanta, Atlanta goes down and now we just have this Belfast to deal with and our team is now going to full send it, uh, uh, full send it towards, uh, towards this Belfast because, you know, there's only one ship. We, everyone, everyone's ha got to get the kill. Um, we're going to be like, okay, dude, how do, how do we want to play this? Um, initially my plan is we get radar here and I'm like, okay, what we're going to do, the plan is we're going to angle ourselves to make it look like we're coming around with the rest of our team. As soon as that radar drops, we are going to go hard to port and, uh, try to get around the back. That way, if he excel, if he decides to reverse out of his smoke screen, we are a ship that is able to engage him relatively quick, quickly. That's the plan. Um, and while that unfurls, let's go ahead and talk about the rest of Bayard. Um, like I said, I think she is a great ship, but you need to have mastered this game. Um, and if you have, she will reward you handsomely. Um, if not, she will frustrate you. You will lose money while playing her and it won't be fun. Um, I think, I think Bayard is fantastic. Um, it, it, it really is one of those ships where you have to use the, the brain you have to use your brain while using it you have to be engaged and uh for that reason i'm having a ton of fun with her i have a feeling that like literally my two my two go-to ships are soon going to be plymouth and bayard for when i want to either relax or get sweaty like that is that is the mood i feel like this is uh belfast pops up right here we're gonna fire our guns but you know french ap close quarters we're gonna get over we're gonna dump our torps at Belfast, we want to stay outside of Belfast's ability to torp us. Because, of course, it's 43. She can torp us. We can see torps come in, take her down, and that is the end of the match. Uh, we end the game with, I think, like 3,200 XP. And for that, it's a pretty good match. So, guys, that's my art. If you like it, let me know. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.